Welcome in everyone to the eighth episode of Bolton Sports Talk, which can now be found on iTunes, Spotify, and YouTube. I'm your host, Brian Rathbone, and on today's show, we have Dave Williams, the athletic director of the Benton Pine School District, to chat a little bit about the state of high school sports, which are officially underway now here in Central Oregon, and games slated to start in just a couple weeks, if all goes right. So, without further ado, here's Dave. All right, joining with me is uh, Dave Williams, Ben Lapine School District Athletic Director, and next year he will be taking over the Athletic Director for Caldera High, the new high school in Bend. You can see his hat that he's wearing now with the, uh, with the new logo. Uh, so Dave, thanks for joining us uh, today. You bet. You bet. Anytime. Yeah. All right. So obviously, you know, the last week or so has been kind of a big week for in the high school sports world. You know, we're given the green light pretty much to to get going with uh, with football and all the other sports. What, what was last week kind of like for you as, you know, someone who kind of oversees the athletic departments for, you know, multiple schools? Yeah, you know, uh, when they came out, uh, we knew some changes were coming with the, with the contact orders from the health authority. Didn't know what they were gonna look like um, for the outdoor contact sports. Uh, you know, it's been kind of a roller coaster ride for, a lot of our schools and athletes and coaches and athletic departments and directors, uh, things seem to change, you know, weekly, daily, sometimes hourly, and the flexibility that everyone has uh, has um, displayed has been absolutely unbelievable. Um, just to, you know, we've been providing these opportunities of training and conditioning since since the, the very first, you know, back in June, we, we started, you know, administering all the protocols and all the safety concerns around athletics and getting kids back with, with uh, their, their peers and their coaches and providing those things. But the last, you know, the last couple of weeks, things have really sped up. Um, you know, a lot of, there was a lot of ang anxiety around getting outdoor contact sports going. Mm -hmm. A lot of people were itching and frustrated and excited all at the same time, um, which is understandable. Uh, you know, they opened up the pathway for the contact sports to begin with a lot. They put a lot of things in place that that, um, you know, on top of the protocols that we've been adhering to for, you know, seven, eight, nine months. Yeah. Um, they you know, we've we had to develop plans for for testing, plans for contact tracing, which we've been doing, um, plans for um, uh, putting waivers in place, which we've had since we've started. So, you know, once those all, all those things were put in place, you know, a sport like football could start their practice progression with, with their equipment. Mm -hmm. um, and they were itching to get that done because we're getting close to competitions. You know, those, those will start in in uh, early March and uh, they have to get those nine uh, contact days of practice in prior to any, any competitions, you know, the sports like cross country um, and volleyball, you know, once, once our, our County went down in risk level, uh, volleyball will be allowed to go, which is, which is outstanding. Yeah. Uh, you know, so, so everybody's kind of, uh, treading lightly and, and moving forward as best they can by following all the, all the guidance. Mm -hmm. It's been a, it's been a steep learning curve for a lot of people, but they're doing outstanding. I know there's a little, uh, a little like hiccup in getting kind of all that paperwork in for football. Cause no football, you had to sign, you know, waivers, you had to opt in all those things. And are, are, are those waivers cleared? Are they, are they, Good to go full, full contact right now? Yeah, as of yesterday, I think all, all four of our high schools um, had, uh, you know, completed all the requirements and responsibilities for the opt-in. Um, and they started with their helmets. So they started they started their progressions yesterday. Um, you know, you, you say the word hiccup and, and it, I, I think it was, you know, they released all this stuff to us that we were going to have to, to, um, accomplish to to get going um and then you know the biggest part was the was the plan that we would have to post to to our athletic websites and provide um the information to the ode mm -hmm. um they 
they, they released a draft form of what that plan was going to look like and then came out a few days later with the actual instructions on what to do. So, you know, when that came out on Friday, um, I know there was some people frustrated that it wasn't happening right now, but, you know, just like everything that we've been doing, um, things, things need to be vetted through and, and not necessarily be the first to accomplish everything. We need to accomplish it the right way. So when those things came out, you know, we got all of our schools organized and the ADs did an outstanding job of organizing all those plans and, uh, putting every, everything in line, all their ducks in a row and got their, got their football teams out there yesterday with, um, you know, their, their protective equipment. So. Yeah, that's good to see. Cause, um, I, I mean, page, like patients have been, you know, really kind of tested, you know, for a lot of teams and finally they get the, all right, we can have contact football. And then all of a sudden there's just like this, I don't want to say hiccup, but like maybe like a lag and maybe getting started at the time that they wanted to, or what they're anticipating, but looks like they should be able to get their, their nine practices in between or their nine full contact practices in between now and March 5th. Is that correct? Yeah. The uh, competitions can start that week of March 1st, you know, typically um, the, the varsity competitions can start on the fourth, which is a Thursday and they'll all start on the fifth. Um, so I would, I would imagine that, um, you know, they'll move those, those sub varsity games around to accommodate the nine practices. Um, some of them might be going for six days in, you know, this week, they might throw in a Saturday to get to their nine practices so they can be eligible for competitions. Okay. Um, so now that, you know, you guys have the green light, you guys are, you know, for, for the most part, able to go all, all sports are able to compete in some, in some way, at least the fall sports in, in spring. Um, yeah. What does the next couple of weeks look like for you and making sure that once these, once these uh, contests kind of do start, they're able to kind of go smoothly and, uh, and happen. <laughs> Yeah, first just time in a year. For, for me, for the position I'm in, you know, and in, in supporting all the schools, that's exactly what I'll be doing is um, supporting ADs and their departments and coaches in, in organizing events and um, the procedures that we're going to have to follow to pull these events off. Um, you know, we're, we're going to be limited by the gathering size within our county. You know, one thing that, that the athletic pieces, we have to follow the county risk levels where, mm -hmm. where the school metrics are, are different. They don't, they don't follow the same metrics. I mean, for school, we're in the uh, um, moderate level and for athletics, we're in the high risk level. So, I mean, there's, there's, a, there's a few different um, scenarios with the gathering size limitations for, for what we're actually going to be able to do and, and uh, you know, how many people we can have and everybody that comes in to the gym for a volleyball match, those people count in those. And, and we'll be allowed, you know, 25% of what our, our ca capacity of our gyms hold or 50 people, whichever is the lower number. Mm -hmm. So, you, you know, you put two volleyball teams in there and officials and all the, the um, personnel to run the events and, and all the entourage of what's going on. And, and um, we're right up to our max. So, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to have um, spectators for the time being in our, in our, um, any of our events. Um, we'll reevaluate that as time goes on. Um, and, you know, as the county levels change, we'll reevaluate those things. But one of the cool things we have right now is um, in all of our high schools, in the gyms and um, football stadiums, you know, we have the capability to, to stream games with, with what's called a pixel lot camera system. That is a, you don't have to have an operator to be up there operating the camera. It just follows the plays, follows mm -hmm. the action. And people can subscribe to um, the NFHS network and, and watch any game that we offer from Bend High to Lapine High. So, you know, what I'll be doing over the next few weeks and the rest of this year while I'm putting together um, the new high school with our design team is supporting, supporting the high schools here and, and helping them successfully run and produce their events. Mm -hmm. um, I'm glad that you mentioned the, uh, 
the, the streaming of games that's kind of the, like the next question is like how long if, if like let's say the shoots county like drops down and you know are able to open or drop down like a risk level you're able to kind of open up you know the fans is, is that something you could see happening you know um it's something that our leadership team at the district level um has on their radar um and uh yeah that's our ultimate goal is to to get moms and dads in there watching their kids i mean that's shoot i love watching my kids play mm -hmm. soccer and baseball and basketball but um you know right now we're not we're not there yet and we'll we'll be evaluating that stuff as time goes on um you know if, if we do drop down it's a big mark to get down from high to to moderate for county for the county risk level um but as we as we move through those things yes we will reevaluate those things mm -hmm. so once you know we get to may for or not may 1st but march 1st um and you know contests are happening almost you know daily kind of throughout the area um with, with all the different sports how, how flexible like do you think this needs to need, needs to be from from the athletic directors end and from your end just like hey so, something could there be a time where like hey we can't play today or, or anything like that. Absolutely, kind of there'll be times when those things come up. I mean, if you have, if you have uh, um, a COVID positive case within your cross country team, you know, there's there's the potential that you could be boarding a bus to get on to go to a, an event where you might get shut down because someone test in the in the group has has a positive case, um, you know, those things could happen. That's why, you know, we were really pushing to adhere to the directive from the executive board of the OSAA and play locally and regionally. And we're doing that within mm -hmm. Ben Lapine schools. Um, we will travel outside of the area on occasion um, on a Saturday, uh, you know, with, with, one team and and when we do travel it'll be varsity only um but yeah the, those things are always going to be in the back of our minds and and hopefully that you know we can we can uh, mitigate a lot of that stuff and and pull off the schedules as close to possible as they as we can yeah, it's yeah we're gonna we're gonna be punting a lot i i think we're gonna be we're going to be making changes on the fly and and adjusting schedules and and hopefully you know people are going to have to remain flexible the entire year yeah i have i have a couple of friends that work in the in, in the media different states that were able to kind of go this uh throughout kind of this last year and kind of one of, one of the messages that they have is like man i would not want to be an athletic director right now just because <laughs> of the <laughs> The, just the daily like having yeah. to change or having to adjust and 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 whatnot it's yeah ready for the uh for, sure, for the we, task ahead <laughs> sure you know we've we have we have networks and connections in other states that have you know there's been a lot of states that have been playing sports and and just talking with people on the west coast you know or wherever just hearing the stories of you know the volleyball teams traveling and they're halfway there they get the word that Oh, there's a there's been a case at such and such high school and they get turned around and they can't play the game. So mm -hmm. so are those things gonna happen? They could. I don't know. I I I've been looking in my crystal ball a lot this year and it's been <laughs> wrong. Yeah, exactly. It's uh this last year's like kind of shown it's hard to hard to predict anything past like a sure. week. Yep. Um And also this year you have your know, task with kind of opening up a new school kind of a lot thro thrown on your plate what, what what's kind of the status of uh caldera mm -hmm. high and where you guys at kind of you know rounding out an athletic department yeah you know um construction's flying right now um all the outdoor facilities are shoot 99 done you got things like you know hanging the backstop nets and and putting the soccer goals together things like that but the bulk of the of the facilities are completed mm -hmm. for the outdoor side and you know and they're just waiting on things to be done in internally inside the building to you know they got to have the hvac system operational to put the gym floor down uh, but you know you walk through the you walk through the building it's going to be an outstanding facility for kids um there's a lot of there's a lot of 
of uh, nuances and, and um, cool pieces that, that um, kids are going to really like and coaches. So it'll be, it'll be fun to work with all that new stuff. Um, you know, we're currently uh, going to start putting together the staff, uh, you know, in the near future, once, once enrollments can get, kids can get pointed in the right directions and figure out how many people are going to be in each high school, you know, we'll start, we'll start um, staffing the building with teachers and coaches that's coming soon, hopefully in the next month or two, because uh, I would like some help putting together the programs with, with the head coaches. Um, so I'm excited about that. Um, yeah, it's been, you know, just working on trying to, trying to input the new school into our league schedules um, with all the different sports. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's challenging, but it's, it's fun work at the same time. We'll open up, we'll open up with, with varsity sports um, at all, with all sports, uh, you know, the exception is going to be for the team sports. We'll play the bulk of the schedules at the JV, JV2 freshman levels, mm -hmm. um, just because, I mean, it's, we're opening with freshman and sophomore. Uh, it's not physically okay to play a varsity schedule in football or basketball. Um, but, you know, we're going to hire head coaches to run those programs to varsity standards. So you're looking at opportunities for kids to come in and, and be with the varsity coach for, for three to four years. So that's a cool opportunity um, and a cool opportunity to, to come in as the head basketball coach and, and get to work with your entire program. They don't necessarily always see their freshman or JV kids. They're going to have these kids to grow their programs. Yeah, for so it's going to be, it's a, it's a unique opportunity. Uh, it's super exciting and it's going to be cool to, cool to be a part of. Yeah, I'm sure that's it. That, that part of the job is probably a little more fun than uh, yeah, yeah. Ha having to uh, navigate through a, through a pandemic and getting schools. Getting no, it's, def it's definitely more fun to sit on the sidelines and watch kids perform. Yeah. Um, so, so the plan is to still have, you know, kind of that sl slower kind of enrollment starting, you know, with a small, is it freshman, sophomore, it's going to be the first year or is mm -hmm. it just going to be freshman the first year? Well, freshman, sophomore first first year and then we'll add a freshman class so we'll be 9 10 11 and then we'll add another freshman class and we'll be 9 9 through 12. So, you know, year 3 will be full enrollment. Okay. And we'll, we'll be we'll be full, you know, the first year, first year with the team sports, the bulk of their schedules will be JV, you know, we'll we'll go down in classification to the 3A 4A level with basketball and baseball, softball, those types of sports to and compete against varsity teams from those levels. Mm -hmm. The individual sports will be, you know, we're going to have freshman and, and sophomore level kids that are ready to get on a wrestling mat and compete at the varsity level or tennis or golf or track. We'll have those kids. Mm -hmm. So we're not going to hold them back in that, in that regard. Um, but the second year, the second year of the school, when we're nine, 10, 11, we plan on going full varsity non-league, and league schedules. All right, and, and that's that's kind of like around the time of uh, when the OSA is kind of reclassifying. Yeah, that's all happening next year. That's all happening next year. Actually, you know, they're going to start. They'll put that committee together probably over the summertime, and in the fall of next year, they'll they'll uh, they'll make decisions on redistricting the entire state. Okay, so we very well we very well could be um, back over here you know, with Redmond, Ridgeview, Prineville. I mean, there's all kinds of scenarios that are out there. Mm -hmm. uh, there's, there's talk of, of dropping down the entire state to just five classifications. That was, that was discussed in the last reclassification um, and then having a, a separate classification for a sport like football. Mm -hmm. But those decisions, those conversations will be, you know, September through December. Okay. All right, Dave. Well, hey, that's all the questions I got for you. I really appreciate you stopping by and uh, t taking the time. Um, good luck the next uh, the next couple of weeks of landing this plane and or taking this plane off and 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 whatnot. And just continuing to build it as we fly it. Yeah. And then hoping we can land somewhere. 
no, yeah, it's but- all good. The, the, the athletes and the families and the coaches have been absolutely great. They've, they've been, you know, doing what they, whatever they are asked to do to get, to get back in some semblance of what they know. Mm-hmm. So things are changing. Things are, things look differently, but you know, we're, we're just moving along the best we can following everything we need to follow. Yeah. Well, like I said, good, good, good luck. And uh, we're, we're rooting for a, uh, for a nice, uh, somewhat smooth flight. You bet. All, All right, right, Brian. Thanks. All right. Thanks, Dave.